Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We're continuing with Chapter 6 today, and today we're looking at Section 6.3, which is factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And also, we're going to look at perfect square trinomials. So the objectives in this section are to factor trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a does not equal 1. So remember, in the last section, we factored trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c, which is the same thing as saying ax squared plus bx plus c, where a does, where a does equal 1. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing, except um, with uh, factoring out a GCF first. Remember, we always look for a GCF as the very first thing. So that won't be a big deal. And then we'll end with looking at factoring perfect square trinomials. And this is the same SLO that we have been looking at so far in this chapter. Uh, I believe it stays on this SLO for most of this chapter might change at the end. Okay, so uh, in a lot of chapter six, I like to start by looking at the chapter five version of the problem. Remember chapter five is our old beginning algebra class. So the chapter five version of one of these problems could look something like multiply two x plus three times x plus four. So I would like to bring up my tablet real quick and remind you how that works. All right, so again, you just do this uh, using FOIL. That's how most people like to do it. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 4 is 12. Now again, if they gave us uh, the polynomial like this, we could factor that by grouping. But usually polynomials are simplified after you multiply by combining the like terms. So we take 8x plus 3x, we get 11x. So of course, the chapter six version, so the chapter five version kind of goes this way. The chapter six version is gonna go this way. They're going to start by asking us to factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. And we somehow have to come up with 2x plus three times x plus four. So I'm gonna be upfront with you. This is harder than what we did in the last section. And the reason it's harder is because uh, the 12 still comes from three times four, but it's kind of hard to undo the 11. Obviously 11 is not three plus four. That's how we got through the last section. So we're going to have to do this a different way. And I'm actually going to show you two ways. There's one way in 6.3 and then there's a different way in 6.4. Uh, a lot of students don't like learning two different ways to do things. <laughs> they just wanna learn one. All I ask is that you um, give both of these methods a fair shake, try them both. You might find ideally that sometimes one method is easier and sometimes the other method's easier. That's what I think. All right, so going back to the presentation. All right, so again, the chapter six version of this problem will say factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. And we have to come up with 2x plus three times x plus four. All right, so how are we going to come up with that answer? That is the big question in this section. All right, and as I pointed out before, the 12 does come from three times four, but the 11 does not come from three plus four. Okay, so, um, the way that I'm going to show you how to do this is to just do it, all right? Um, this is the only method that I learned when I learned this stuff. I'm not gonna say in what year. Um, a lot of students come to this course having already taken some algebra, so it's likely that you have already learned another method. Again, all I ask is that you give this one a fair shake. There are certain situations where I really do believe that this one is the easiest, okay? 
And then remember that not all polynomials can be factored. And in those cases, you just write prime. Remember, show me everything you tried. All right, so here we go. These are the examples. I have them all written out on the tablet. So as soon as I have brought up all the examples, I'm going to switch over to the tablet. All right. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So uh, this example is pretty uh, easy one to start with. All right, so first of all, what do I always look for first? GCF, right? Sometimes there's gonna be a GCF hiding in there and you definitely want to deal with that GCF. So this is not one of those times. Okay. So now let's get to it. We suspect that uh, this thing is gonna factor into two binomials. That's usually how this works. Oops, okay, well, all right. I'll just go ahead and tell you. The only reasonable way that I could have gotten this three X squared, remember I'm undoing FOIL, all right? So, my first question is how would I get the three X squared? And really the only reasonable way to get that is from three X and X, okay? So the, the second question is how would I get the four? All right, we're gonna deal with the middle term at the end. How would I get the four? Well, there are a few different ways that I could have gotten the four. And you know what? This is not usually the way that I show this when I'm doing it on a whiteboard, but what the heck, let's try something different. So the four could have come from one and four. It could have come from two and two, or it could have come from four and one. So literally the way this works is I'm just going to try each of those until I find the one that works, okay? So just kind of thinking ahead to when I show you the other method, I recommend this method when there aren't a whole lot of things to try, all right? So in this case, there are only three things that can possibly work, and that's not a lot of things, all right? You can do FOIL really fast. <clears throat> I know that the F part of FOIL is gonna work. That's three X times X is three X squared. I know that the L part of FOIL is gonna work one times four is four. So now I have to check the O and the I part. Three X times four, which is the outer, would give me 12 X. One times X would give me X. So now I need to think about, is there any way to combine a 12 X and an X to get an eight X uh, with any signs you want? All right, I worry about the signs usually is the very last thing. So plus, plus, minus, minus, one of each. Well, I don't think so, right? So I don't think this is the one. So we'll cross that out and we'll try the next one. 3x times 2 is 6x. 2 times x is 2x. And I think that's the one that works, right? Because if the sign on the 6x is plus, which would mean this is a plus, and if the sign on 2x is plus, which would make this a plus, I think that's going to work out, all right? So I think my answer is 3x plus two times x plus two. We could check that real quick. One thing I like about this method is that you're kind of doing the check as you go along. Um, you know, but maybe just this one time I'll do the check. So remember first outer inner last, three X times X is three X squared. Three X times two is six X, three, uh, two times X is two X, two times two is four. Combine six X and two X and lo and behold, woohoo, that's what I started with. So my answer is, 3x plus 2 times x plus 2. And I didn't even have to try that one. All right. So hopefully that doesn't seem too horrible. 
Um, spoiler alert, I will be showing you one example that uh, once you know both methods, I would not blame you at all if you did um, this particular example using the other method. But I do like this one example because it gives me an excuse to show you a trick that I still think that, that I thought up. Uh, I don't remember anybody ever showing this to me. I could be wrong. All right, next example. We want to factor 3n squared minus 20n plus 25. Let me just remind you, I'll remind you of this as often as I think of it. Uh, whenever you want to try an example, one great thing about you know doing this from a video is that you can pause the video, try it, and then come back and compare notes. Another good thing about a video is that as long as you start your homework early enough in the week, you can turn off the video if you get tired of me and come back to it the next day. That's something you can't do in a face-to-face -face class. All right, so GCF, once again, is one, so no help there. <clears throat> and once again, the only reasonable way to get 3n squared is from 3n and n. There are three possible ways to get 25. That 25, and you know what? I'm gonna show you the way that I do normally write this at the whiteboard. I usually just put the numbers underneath. So it could be one and 25, it could be five and five, or it could be 25 and one. All right, so let's try one and 25. Again, I don't worry about the signs until I think I'm onto something. Three N times 25, is 75 n, one times n is n, and no matter how hard I try with plus plus, minus minus, one of each, I don't think I can make 75 n and n into minus 20 n. So I don't think this is the one that's gonna work. Oh, you know what, I wanted to try something. Uh, since that doesn't work, let's get rid of that. Ah, yes, this will work. Eh, it's just gonna take me a little while. There we go. Uh, one more, couple more. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so it's not this one. So let's try five and five. <clears throat> Three N times five is 15 N. Five times N is five N. Oh, look, can you make 15N and 5N into minus 20N? Well, yes, you can. All you have to do is put a minus on the 15N, which would mean this is a minus, and put a minus on the 5N, which would mean this is a minus. The other thing you do have to look at is, uh, is, is that going to give you the right sign on the last term? All right, I have seen some of these that I would consider to be kind of tricky because it looks like you can get the right thing to make the middle term, but then the sign doesn't work on the last term. All right, so just note that uh, negative five times negative five is positive 25. So that is gonna make the sign come out right. Of course, if you do the full check at the end, all of that stuff will come out, okay? To save a little bit of time, I don't check every single problem. Okay, but I promise you this one does work. You can check it yourself. That's never a bad thing to do. All right. Okay, next. 8x cubed minus 14x squared y plus 3xy squared. So this one uh, maybe looks just a little scary. All right, so this is one of those situations where I will be very happy if I remember to look for GCF first. Because this does have a GCF worth talking about. What do all three of those terms have in common? They have an X in common, don't they? Oops, okay. So I'm gonna start by pulling out that X which is going to leave me 8x squared minus 14xy plus 3y squared. 
All right. Now, I remember in the last section, we talked about this x squared, xy, y squared <clears throat> pattern. And what we said about that was that these uh, mystery binomials are going to have to have not only an x here, but also a y <clears throat> over here. Okay. So now it's just a matter of what numbers to stick in front of the x's and the y's. All right, so remember I think about the first term and the last term before I think about the middle term. And this time I'm focusing on that 3y squared. There is only one reasonable way to get that 3y squared, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that the uh, y terms have to be a 3y and a y, okay? So the only mystery is what goes here and what goes here. So there are now four possibilities, I think, for uh, what could go in those spaces. Uh, so these are all the different numbers that multiply to eight. This could be one and eight. It could be two and four. It could be four and two, or it could be eight and one. Okay. All right, so um, again, you just try each one until you find the one that uh, works. So this time I'm gonna cheat a little bit just to save some time. I'm going to pretend that I already tried one and eight and already tried two and four. And I'm gonna skip right to four and two because I think that's the one that works. And you know, you don't have to try these in any particular order. If you're feeling lucky, you have a a feeling about one of them, uh, go ahead and try that one first. 4x times y is 4xy. Oh, and look, I was wrong. <laughs> 3y times 2x is 6xy. Okay, so it's not four and two, it's probably two and four. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Okay, so it's definitely not this one. All right, so now, um, okay, I'll do the same thing I did before. Just keep tapping on this until all that stuff disappears. Okay, so it's not this one. I think it's probably two and four. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Let's see, two X times Y is two X Y. 3y times 4x is 12xy. Woohoo! Can I get minus 14xy out of that? Yes, I can. If this is a minus, which would mean that this is a minus, and if this is a minus, which would mean this is a minus. Notice that the last sign does come out correct. Negative 3y times negative y is plus 3y squared. So that is the correct answer. Uh, again, if you would like to check this one, uh, please feel free. Let me just remind you, I, I said this in one of the last two videos, because I remember saying it recently. Um, when you do check this, and I'm not gonna do the full check, uh, when you have a, a factor sitting outside like that X, that gets distributed into one of these only. So you could distribute it into this one and that would give you 2x squared minus 3xy and then you would foil that with 4x minus y. So I'm going to write etc. here to make it clear that that is not the complete check. Uh, but the correct answer is x times 2x minus 3y times 4x minus y. All right, the last example before we move on to perfect square trinomials is this one. So this is the one I was talking about earlier. Once you learn the, the uh, method that I'm gonna show you in 6.4, that method would be easier for this problem. Okay, but let me just show you anyway. GCF, this time, no help. There's nothing that all three of those have in common. So what makes this problem kind of a beast, at least it, it sort of looks like it will be at the beginning, 
uh, to do by trial and error is that it looks like there are a whole lot of things to try. So that 6x squared <clears throat> could have come from uh, 6x and x, or it also could have come from 3x and 2x. And you know what's even worse is that 12. That 12 could come from 1 and 12. It could come from 2 and 6. It could come from 3 and 4. It could also come from 4 and 3, 6 and 2, 12 and 1. Or it could be any one of those combinations on this other one. Yeah. OK, that's the bad news. But I have good news coming up. Because of my Mitchell patented trick, and I'm just kidding, it's not really patented. You're allowed to use it. You don't have to pay me royalties. Um, is that most of these things are not worth trying, as it turns out. OK, Mitchell patented trick. Here we go. First of all, very heavily depends on that you have looked for the GCF at the beginning. This trick will fall apart if you forget to look for the GCF, OK? All right, next. Let's look at this 2 and 6. I claim to you that that one is not worth trying. Why? Because if I had a 2 sitting in there with that 6x, that would create a GCF of 2 that I could pull out of that binomial. And I know that can't be because I already looked for GCF at the beginning. So there is no way that it's 2 and 6 with 6x six and x. OK. I'm going to hit my undo button again. I always hit it after I cross something out. And I want to keep the cross out. I just don't want to keep any of that other stuff. OK, so 2 and 6 is not worth trying. 3 and 4 is also not worth trying for the same reason. If I had a 3 sitting in there with that 6x, that would create a GCF of 3, which I know I don't have. So forget that. 4 is not worth trying, because if 4 was in there with 6x, I could pull out a 2. So forget that. And similarly, it can't be 6 in with 6x, and it can't be 12 in with 6x. Any of those would create a GCF. So that's not too bad. There were potentially 12 things worth trying, and I've gotten rid of five of them. But wait, there's more. Uh, 12 is not worth trying with 2x, because I'd be able to pull out a 2. So forget about that. It also doesn't make sense to put the 6 with the 2x. It doesn't make sense to put the 4 with the 2x. This one I do have to keep. Uh, 4 with 3x will not create a common factor. 3 with 2x will not create a common factor. By the way, that's the same for this one. That's why I skipped over it at the beginning. Uh, 1 with 6x, 12 with x, those, that's potentially OK. Uh, but it doesn't make sense to put 2 in with 2x, and it doesn't make sense to put 12 with 3x. So look at that. There were uh, 12 things that we might have been tempted to try. I only have to try two of them. Uh, and actually, I might only have to try one of them if I get lucky and pick the one that works first, which I believe is this one. Let's see, 3x times 3 is 9x. 4 times 2x is 8x. OK, now I have to be careful. Uh, yes, I can make those into a plus x as long as the 9x has a plus on it, which would mean this is plus. And the 8x has a minus on it, which would make this a minus. So there it is, 3x minus 4 times 2x plus 3 using the Mitchell patented trick. All righty. So let's put that in a box. That is the answer that I would type into my online homework if I was doing online homework. 
All right, switching back to the presentation because we're done with that example. All right, that brings us to perfect square trinomials. So hopefully somewhere you have seen the special pattern for squaring a binomial. Uh, one of them is the square of a plus b is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Uh, that's what you would get if you foiled it. Remember, a plus b squared means a plus b times a plus b. So a lot of students um, like to just foil it. I, I always encourage you to try to remember this pattern. Makes it just a little easier. Saves you maybe a couple seconds on each problem. If it's a minus b being squared, the only difference is then it comes out to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so going from here to here is a chapter five problem. Going from here uh -oh, to here is a chapter six problem. So what we need to be able to do uh, for this type of problem is recognize a perfect square trinomial and then be able to factor it. All right, so to factor a trinomial of the form a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, uh, the answer is just gonna be a plus or minus b squared. All right, and when I say plus or minus, I mean if this is a plus, then that's also going to be a plus, and if this is a minus, that's also going to be a minus. All right, so I'm going to show you uh, two examples <clears throat> of factoring perfect square trinomials. Going back to the tablet, and this will be about it for this section. All right, so we have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So here's how I deal with perfect square trinomials. First, I have to uh, recognize that that's a perfect square trinomial. To identify a perfect square trinomial, you need to ask yourself two questions. Number one, oops, are these perfect squares? The answer is yes, because 4x squared is what you get when you square 2x, and 9 is what you get when you square 3. So that is the first test for a perfect square trinomial. The first and the last terms have to be perfect squares. The second test has to do with that 2ab term in the middle of the trinomial. So you look at this middle term and you ask yourself, is that two times the product of the things that were squared to get the first term and the last term? So what I mean by that is the 2x and the 3. Okay, so you just drop this in here. You drop this in here. And the answer is yes, 2 times 2x times 3 is 12x. The other thing I notice is that the middle term is a minus and the last term is a plus. In a perfect square trinomial, this term must be a plus. Uh, and that's really the only requirement for signs. Well, the first term has to be plus. And when you don't see a sign, that means plus. Uh, the middle term can be either plus or minus. So what you do with that information is you say 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 factors as something, something squared. Because this is a minus, that makes this a minus. And what goes in the brackets is the 2x and the 3. Ta-da! So that is my answer. Uh, you know what? It might be worth checking that one. And you know what? I'll cheat. I'll check it using FOIL because not everybody knows the special pattern. 
Two X minus three squared means two X minus three times two X minus three. Sorry, sorry, I'm writing kind of small here. F-O-I-L. Two X times two X is four X squared. 2x times minus 3 is minus 6x. Minus 3 times 2x is minus 6x. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. I'm going to skip writing the last. Well, no, I won't. I'll write it down here. Uh, minus 6 minus 6 gives me my minus 12. Woohoo! All right, so final answer 2x minus 3 squared. Okay. So I am going to suggest that when we get to letter B, when we turn the page, that you pause the video and try that one yourself. Works the exact same way we did this one. Here it is. All right, so pause the video, try that one, come back, we'll compare notes. <laughs> All right, so I have to assume you've done that. <clears throat> okay, number one, is this and this a perfect square? Yes, they are. This is the square of 3y. This is the square of 8. That's question number one. Question number two is about the middle term. Is it two times the things that just got squared? 2 times 3y is 6y. 6y times 8 is 48y. Woohoo! The last uh, sign is a plus. Okay, so that has to that has to be there. So that means 9y squared plus 48y plus 64 is the square of because this is plus. This is also a plus. And in between, you put the 3y and the 8. Oh, by the way, bad teacher, I forgot to look for a GCF on these two. It never fails. Every semester, I always forget to look for it at least once. You know what it is? I've been doing these for so long that 99.9% .9 of the time, my brain just automatically sees whether there's a GCF or not. And so I don't always think to mention it, especially when there's not. All right. Uh, but do remember to always look for that GCF. OK, so to end this section, I would like to start making a list of factoring tricks. So this is going to be the beginning of the list. So the steps for factoring a polynomial, number one, Keep common factor on, just do that throughout the whole process. Okay, but the real step one is factor out the GCF. If there is a GCF worth factoring out. Step two, ask yourself how many terms does your polynomial have? If it has four terms, that's grouping. We talked about that in section 6.1. If there are three terms, then you can do it by trial and error. And I kind of consider both sections 6.2 and 6.3 to be trial and error. Uh, there is another way, which I will show you in the next video. And um, later on in this chapter, in section 6.5, we'll talk about factoring binomials, polynomials with two terms. Okay, and don't forget, you can always check your answer. Sometimes I like to joke that the only reasonable answers in a factoring problem are the correct answer or a big question mark, right? Uh, you, you don't ever have to leave a wrong answer because if you check it, you can tell it's a wrong answer and then you know that's not the answer, All right? I don't recommend leaving things blank though. Show me everything you tried. And if you try a bunch of things and you don't find something that works, well, that could mean that the polynomial is prime, right? Or it could mean that there were eight things worth trying and you tried seven of them. So in that case, I would give you lots of partial credit. All right, that's gonna do it for section 6.3. We'll see you next time.